Imagine a company that once stood at the pinnacle of success, but then it came crashing down in a whirlwind of scandals, controversies, and jaw-dropping revelations. Today, we're peeling back the layers of Anne Moy's dramatic fall from grace. If you're ready to discover the shocking truth, stay tuned because this video is about to take you on a wild ride through one of the most captivating stories in the world of business and multi-level marketing. Amway, once the shining star of the multi-level marketing world, has been cast into the shadows of scandal and intrigue. In this video, we're about to unveil the shocking revelations, the jaw-dropping controversies, and the drama that unfolded behind the scenes. My offers over 350 different nutrition, personal care, home care, and houseware products. They're more than just a soap company. Well, how come you know so much about Amway? I own Amway business. <laughs> you mean you're leaving me? No, my husband and I are building financial independence as part-time Amway distributors. I'm going to off. Is that opportunity knocking? Discover today's Amway better than ever. The Amway Corporation's journey began as a small two-person enterprise marketing a versatile cleaning product. Over time, it has evolved into the world's largest and most well-known multi-level marketing company. Its intense range of offerings spanning from personal care items to major appliances resulted in sales exceeding $7 billion in 1998. Distributed through a network of nearly 1 million representatives across 80 countries and territories. Along the way, its founders, Richard M. Devos and J. Van Andel, transformed some of their supporters into millionaires and themselves into members of the Fortune 400 Billionaires Club. As home-based businesses gained popularity in the late 20th century America, Amway served as an inspiration for numerous similar enterprises, selling a wide array of products from soap to long-distance telephone services. Initially known as the American Way Association, Amway has also reunited interest in the quintessential American success narrative, characterized by achieving financial prosperity through hard work, individualism, and a positive outlook free enterprise and unwavering faith in God and country. The post-World War II era of prosperity motivated individuals to seek their own version of the American dream. In 1949, a variation of the chain letter frenzy from the 1930s emerged in the United States in the form of pyramid friendship clubs. These clubs encouraged people to expand their social circles by requiring a payment of one or two dollars to join and in turn recruit at least two other paying members. The person at the very top of the pyramid hosted a gathering and received all the contributions before exiting the scheme. This phenomenon, labeled as New Mass Hysteria by Life magazine, gained popularity primarily within the lower middle class but also managed to attract participants from the upper class. The pyramid structure, however, was illegal, constituting a form of gambling. Nonetheless, authorities hesitated to intervene due to the potential for a significant public outcry. In fact, numerous outraged readers even threatened to cancel their subscriptions to the Detroit News when the newspaper published articles condemning these clubs. Despite this, magazines and movie newsreels continue to depict images of fortunate participants flaunting bundles of money at pyramid gatherings. Nevertheless, the majority of those involved ended up with nothing more than aspirations of instant wealth. J. Van Andel, born in 1924, and Richard Devos, born in 1926, first crossed paths as students at Grand Rapids, Michigan's Christian High School in 1940. The story of their initial business arrangement is well known. Devos paid Van Andel 25 cents each week in exchange for rides to and from school in Van Andel's aging Ford Model A. Both of them were of Dutch-American descent and also went to the conservative Christian Reformed Church. They shared common backgrounds, values, and interests. Their respective families instilled in them a strong work ethic. 
emphasizing the importance of developing their own businesses as a means of ensuring their financial security. World War II briefly separated them, but they reunited after the war and embarked on their first entrepreneurial endeavors, establishing a flight school and launching the first drive-in restaurant in Grand Rapids. After an eventful journey through South America that involved various modes of transportation, the two men embarked on a quest for a new business opportunity in 1949. Their answer came during the height of the pyramid scheme craze, in the form of Neutralite vitamins and dietary supplements. Neutralite had been established by Carl Renborg, a survivor of a Chinese internment camp who returned to the United States convinced of the health benefits associated with vitamins and nutritional supplements. Renborg's company employed a distinct sales approach known as multi-level or network marketing, which bore some similarities to pyramid schemes but had its own unique characteristics. New distributors paid $49 for a sales kit, which was not considered a membership fee but rather covered the cost of the kit. Importantly, they were not obligated to recruit new distributors or meet sales quotas unless they chose to do so. Neutralite distributors adopted certain elements from pyramid friendship clubs, such as selling their products directly by going door to door and engaging in face-to-face -face interactions with potential customers. They were also encouraged to follow up with customers to ensure that the purchased products were being used correctly and to inquire if additional supplies were needed. These customers often transitioned into becoming new Neutralite distributors, and the original distributors received a percentage of the sales made by the new recruiters, even if they eventually exited the business. Devos and Van Andel demonstrated remarkable success in the realm of network marketing. They earned $82,000 in their first year and surpassed $300,000 in earnings in 1950. While operating the makeshift office spaces in their respective home basements, over the subsequent decade, they established one of the most prosperous neutralite distributions in the United States. In 1958, an internal dispute within Neutralite's management led the duo to create their own organization and product range. They founded the American Way Association, which was subsequently renamed the Amway Corporation the following year. Devos and Van Andel centered their enterprise around another product, a highly concentrated, versatile cleaner called LOC, or liquid organic cleaner. I'm really curious, has anyone tried this cleaner in the comments below? In addition to their roles as distributors, they also enjoyed the added advantage of company ownership, meaning they earned a share of the proceeds from every sale, not solely those made by themselves or their network of distributors. The new venture quickly gained momentum and surpassed even the most optimistic sales projections of its founders. As stated in the company's official biography, it rapidly outgrew its small premises and prompted a relocation to a facility situated on the present day corporate site in the suburb of Grand Rapids, Atta, Michigan in 1960. The year 1962 marked Amway's transition into an international corporation with the establishment of its first affiliate in Canada. By 1963, sales had expanded to 12 times the initial year's figures. In just seven years of operation, Amway had to undertake 45 plant expansions to keep up with the exponential growth in sales. By 1965, the company, which had begun with a staff of only a dozen employees, employed 500 people and its network of distributors had swelled to 65,000. The original LOC product was complemented by several distinct product lines, each featuring a wide array of offerings. Most of these products were imitations with chemical compositions similar to well-known brand names but sold under the Amway label. Notably, a fire at Amway's aerosol plant in Atta in 1969 failed to impede the company's growth. Oh, I, am. I can get to there. This light meal has been off an Amway food box. Amway makes Amway offers over 350 home care, housewares, nutrition, and personal care products. How come you know about Amway? My wife and I have our own part time Amway business. We're building financial independence. Sounds like you really fly with Amway. Contact an Amway distributor. I've got the whole story. 
The 1970s held significant importance for the company. Pyramid schemes gathered renewed public scrutiny in 1972 when a South Carolina promoter by the name of Glenn Turner was found guilty of defrauding thousands of people through deceptive cosmetic and motivational pyramid schemes. In 1975, the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, accused Amway of employing several pyramid-like tactics. A lawyer from the FTC remarked, they appear to be more of a quasi-religious socio-political organization than a business. Additionally, the FTC alleged that the company failed to disclose its high distributor dropout rate, which exceeded 50%. However, in 1978, an administrative law judge disagreed, asserting that Amway constituted a legitimate business opportunity. Subsequently, the company launched an extensive public relations campaign against pyramid schemes, which continued on its corporate website well into the late 1990s. In the 1970s, Amway significantly intensified its global expansion efforts, extending its operations into Europe and Asia. Notably, in 1972, Amway acquired Neutralite Products, the company initially founded by Van Andel and Devos. The company's inaugural billion-dollar revenue year occurred in 1980. Concurrently, the Amway World Headquarters underwent continuous growth, including the opening of a new cosmetics facility in Ada. By the conclusion of the 1980s, Amway distributors were in 19 countries across five continents promoting a wide array of Amway manufactured products in addition to various other brand name items offered through the catalog. The proliferation of personal computers and corporate downsizing contributed to the surge in home-based businesses during the 1980s and 90s, which proved advantageous for network marketing companies like Amway. Although less than 5% of individuals earned an annual income exceeding 40000 according to estimates from the Direct Selling Association, approximately 30,000 people were becoming new direct marketing distributors each week in 1997. And that's insane. I feel like everyone has an Amway story. Let me know in the comments below. I actually remember, I think in the early 2000s, my older brother was selling the phone lines, I'm pretty sure. And then I think I, someone tried to convert me because I remember going to their house and they were explaining the whole system and how it worked. And I think I even had a party selling artistry, I'm pretty sure. In an era marked by increasingly impersonal retail experiences, customers welcomed a return to personalized salesmanship. As one multi-level distributor stated in a 1997 interview with the Associated Press, when you buy a product at the store, the manager doesn't call to check on you. Amway sales presentations place significant emphasis on customer service, interwoven with accounts of triumph from prosperous distributors, a strong infusion of positive thinking, and appeals to faith and patriotism. Amway's promotional materials, encompassing books, videos, and online presence, abounded with stories of individuals achieving a rags to riches success. Nevertheless, not everyone found success with the company. As one former distributor conveyed to the Associate Press saying, I witnessed many others earning money, but we just couldn't make it work for us. Nonetheless, the Wall Street Journal reported in 1998 that an increasing number of doctors were recruiting patients and other medical professionals to sell Amway products as a way to offset income reductions attributed to managed health care. No. We never had the money to feel really independent until we discovered Amway. Started part time. We're earning extra income as Amway distributors, bringing others into it. We run it. We're our own boss. And being more independent is the best security. When someone wants to tell you about Amway, listen and get the whole story. With the one of Amway, you can do it too. During the 1990s, a second generation of individuals assumed key leadership roles within the privately owned Amway Corporation. In 1992, a board of directors was established, consisting of Devos, Van Andel, and eight family members. Steve A. Van Andel, born in 1955, and Richard M. Devos Jr., born in 1955, took over as chairman and president, succeeding their fathers. 
In the same period, by 1998, the senior Devos and Van Andel had accumulated personal fortunes estimated at around $1.5 billion and $1.4 billion, respectively, which is insane. Imagine what that would be now. They utilize their wealth to support educational and Christian endeavors. Nonetheless, Amway confronted fresh legal challenges. Starting in 1982, Procter and Gamble filed lawsuits against several Amway distributors for falsely claiming that the company endorsed Satanism. In response, in 1998, Amway initiated legal action against Procter and Gamble, accusing them of disseminating indecent and deceptive statements regarding Amway and its executives. This litigation unveiled the extent of Procter & Gamble's apprehension about competition from Amway. In the late 20th century, the Devos family garnered media attention for their substantial financial support of the Republican Party and various conservative political causes. During the 1996 presidential campaign, Richard M. Devos Sr. and his wife were the most significant contributors to the Republicans with a donation of $1 million. They also encouraged Amway distributors to contribute thousands of additional dollars. In addition, Amway allocated $1.3 million to assist the party in broadcasting its own coverage of the 1996 National Convention on a conservative evangelist, Pat Robertson's cable television channel. Richard M. Devos Jr. characterized this as a public service. Betsy Davos, his wife, acknowledged their influence, stating, I have decided to no longer take offense at the suggestion that we are buying influence. Now I simply concede the point. They are right. We do accept some things in return, as she expressed in an article for Roll Call. Nevertheless, despite the company's political associations, Amway's allure as a source of easy money continued to draw new distributors to the company. As one couple who had previously been school teachers shared on the company's website in 1999, Amway wasn't just a soap business, people's lives were transformed by it. Now we are living our dream of building an Amway business as a family. And let me know in the comments below, do you know anyone that sold Amway that currently sells it? Let me know your experiences. I'm really curious. And now, since everyone always likes to hear about the beauty side of Amway, let's talk about Artistry Cosmetics. So Artistry represents a line of skincare and beauty products owned by Amway, with its headquarters situated in Ada, Michigan. These products are distributed through Amway's multi-level marketing network. In 1968, Edith Reinborg, the spouse of Neutralite founder Carl Reinborg, established Edith Reinborg Cosmetics, later known as Artistry. The pivotal shift occurred in 1972 when Neutralite emerged with Amway, granting Amway predominant ownership of the Artistry brand. Subsequently, the brand underwent international expansion, making its presence felt in countries such as Australia, Hong Kong, Malaysia, France, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom and West Germany. In 1980, artistry items were manufactured at Neutralite's facility in California, and by 1995, production had extended to the Amway facility in China. Over time, Artistry broadened its product offerings, and by 2000, the Artistry product line encompassed more than 400 items. So let me know in the comments below, have you ever used Artistry Cosmetics? Um, would you recommend it? I feel like I don't really like the packaging. I do like the vintage packaging. When I looked up the vintage products from the 60s, they are really cute looking. Um, I wouldn't buy it now just because I'm like terrified of getting sucked in. I don't know, something with the website creeps me out. Anyways, when I was doing other research, this kind of came up. I'm not saying that selling Amway either it makes you a serial killer or attracts certain type of people. I just thought it was interesting that I discovered two different well-known serial killers that did sell Amway, whether it's just because it's a big MLM and the odds are a lot of people in the past may have sold it. Let me know in the comments below your opinion on this, but I thought this was an interesting side of the story. So Paul Bernardo, 
sold Amway, and so by day Bernardo held a job at Amway, an organization known for its sales-oriented culture, which had a profound influence on him. He was actively engaged in purchasing books and tapes authored by prominent motivational speakers who focused on wealth and fame. Outside of work, Bernardo and his college friends practiced pickup techniques to successfully approach women they met in bars. However, Bernardo took things to the next level and took pleasure in publicly humiliating his dates and engaging in forceful sexual acts. His relationships ended up getting worse and had more instability where he would actually threaten and harm his partners. In 1986, Bernardo received restraining orders from two women after making obscene phone calls to them. So that's interesting that he used a lot of his Amway techniques to be charming to different women, some of the women that he attacked. So let me know in the comments below your thoughts on that. And then I also discovered that Gary Ridgway also sold Amway. In a recorded interview, Ridgway asserted that his involvement with Amway had a positive impact on him as he contended that he committed fewer acts of violence during his time with the organization. Certainly he committed slayings over several different years. It is quite likely that the exact count of the people that he killed while he was involved with Amway remains unknown. Whether he killed anyone he personally encountered while participating in Amway activities is also uncertain. However, he did target a specific type of women who were call girls and worked in that industry. Amway and by extension Ridgeway typically present themselves as door-to-door -door salespeople in an industry that fill Ellen Becker, a supporter of Wisconsin's Melinda's Law, has extensively documented to be plagued by several criminal activity and human exploitation. Amway cannot simultaneously position itself as a door-to-door -door sales company, as they assert, while distancing themselves from the troubling aspects commonly associated with genuine door-to-door -door industries. I feel like the glory days of doing door-to-door -door sales is long gone. Everyone's like more standoffish now and it's just not necessary and you just don't know who you're going to trust. Like I wouldn't let some stranger in knocking on my door trying to sell me Amway, but that's just me. Have you ever experienced an Amway person coming to your door? And participating in an Amway might enhance a person's skills and deception, making them more adept to conning others, but it doesn't necessarily lead to an improvement in the moral character. Joining an organization with a structure similar to the mafia could indeed boost someone's financial prospects, but they may also become talented by the inherent corruption within the organization. So I just don't know if this is just a coincidence. It is strange. I mean, I don't know any serial killers that sold Avon, but I guess Amway has more cleaning products and stuff like that. Just let me know in the comments below your thoughts about it. It's noteworthy that Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, pursued the Amway dream while conceivably committing some of the most horrific slayings in recent history. While few people have achieved prosperity via Amway's business structure, others have been engulfed by its misleading methods. So people have this assurance of rapid wealth. A major warning sign linked to Amway's MLM system is a pledge of speedy wealth. People are frequently lured in by assertions of substantial earnings, opulent living, and financial autonomy. Nevertheless, the actual outcomes are significantly less glamorous for most Amway members. Another troubling aspect of Amway MLM is its strong emphasis on recruiting. Instead of giving priority to the promotion of high quality products, the primary focus is on growing the network of distributors. This recruitment-centric approach sustains a pyramid-style framework in which the main source of earnings comes from enlisting new participants rather than from genuine product sales. Despite Amway's potential of boundless income potential, this actual situation is considerably more restrained. Independent inquiries and breachers have exposed that a notable portion of Amway distributors generate minimal to zero profits. The vast majority of participants discover themselves at the pyramid's base, grappling to recover from initial investments. To protect yourself from potential Amway MLN fraud, or analogous schemes, it is essential to engage in comprehensive research and make sure that you just don't get sucked in, exercise caution when confronted with exaggerated commitments and high entry freeze. So let me know in the comments below your thoughts 
on Amway and MLMs in general. While not all MLMs are inherently deceptive, it's crucial to approach these opportunities with a degree of skepticism and careful scrutiny. I feel like Amway might be one of the worst ones. I don't know, I've just heard lots of stories. I feel like ones like Avon, I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. Like I joined it just to get the discount on the products. Let me know in the comments below if you have any stories. I'm so curious. And let me know if you want me to do any other beauty brands or cover any other companies, especially any other MLMs. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.